Hey guys, it's Jan here. As you know, I really enjoyed the Deadpool movie and I'm psyched to hear that sequel's already been greenlit and is being written by the same screenwriters. In this video, I'm going to break down Deadpool's post credit scenes and talk about what it means for the sequel. There will be spoilers ahead, so if you're not ready for that, check out my non-spoiler review of the movie right here. Deadpool's post credits is a perfect mix of tribute to John Hughes's classic 80s comedy Ferris Bueller's Day Off and sly dig at Marvel's post credit scenes, which typically tease future instalments in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and have featured Samuel L. Jackson as a leather-clad, eye-patch-wearing S.H.I.E.L.D. director Nick Fury at the end of Iron Man, Thor and Captain America the First Avenger. Deadpool's joke that, oh, you're expecting a teaser for Deadpool 2? Well, we don't have that kind of money. Again, is a crack at not only Marvel's movies, but also also other big budget PG-13 superhero movies such as the X-Men franchise. And the influence of Ferris Bueller is obvious in the look of Deadpool's post credits, in which our anti-hero dons a Bueller-style dressing gown and appears in a room which owes a lot to the classic comedy thanks to the positioning of its two doors, the pictures on the wall and its flowery wallpaper. And it's also clear in Deadpool's fourth wall breaking line, you're still here? It's over, go home! And later he also tells us to go, all of which mimics Ferris Bueller's words as does the way Deadpool says them while emerging from the door and walking towards the camera. And when Deadpool says chicka chicka at the very end, he's imitating the same sound which appears at the end of Ferris Bueller's post-credits that's taken from Yellow's song, Oh Yeah. Okay, so in the second part of Deadpool's post-credits, we get the reveal that there's going to be a sequel featuring the comic book character Cable. Deadpool playfully mentions that they're looking to cast someone, a big guy with a flat top, like Mel Gibson, Dolph Lundgren, or Keira Knightley. It's interesting that Deadpool mentions Mel Gibson because the cover of Deadpool 41 is a fantastic homage to the original Mad Max trilogy, in which Mel Gibson, of course, played Max. And the score to the Deadpool movie is by Junkie XL, who also scored Mad Max Fury Road. As for Dolph Lundgren, he played the Punisher in the 1989 movie, and the Punisher has appeared in the Deadpool Suicide Kings comics. The Kira Knightley reference, as well as being a joke about her acting range, could also be a crafty callback to the fact that she played bounty hunter Domino Harvey in Tony Scott's 2005 action movie Domino, and in the Marvel comics, there's a female mutant called Domino who teams up with Cable's mercenary group Six Pack. By the way, Deadpool's words, big secret, shh, reminded me of the character's appearance in the post credits of X Men Origins Wolverine, where we see see his severed head breaking the fourth wall, whispering shh to the audience, because at the time, no one knows he's still alive. There have been rumours and support from fans for a good while now about having Cable in the sequel. Cable's the son of Cyclops and Jean Grey clone Madeline Pryor. He's a time-travelling mutant cyborg with a cybernetic eye, bionic arms, superhuman strength, and telepathic and telekinetic powers. When Deadpool and Cable first meet, they're enemies, but later they team up and even have their own comic book series together. In the comics, Cable also established the X-Force, basically an offshoot of the X-Men. So making a sequel with him might be a good way for Fox to finally get an X-Force movie off the ground. Ryan Reynolds has already said that an X-Force movie is a priority for him, and Reynolds also posted a teaser video of him and Olivia Munn, who plays Psylocke in X-Men Apocalypse. So is he hinting at a potential Deadpool-Psylocke buddy-up in X-Force? What do you think? Going back to character arcs that were left open in Deadpool, for me I'd love to see Vanessa get to play her comic book alter ego copycat. In the final fight, Vanessa was put in a glass case like the one Wade was in at the workshop, and Ajax started suffocating her just as he'd done to trigger Wade's mutant powers. As Ajax told Wade earlier in the movie, stress activates mutant genes, so perhaps the stress of falling off an exploding helicarrier in the glass tank could have triggered some powers in Vanessa that we'll see in the next movie. In the comics, her metamorphic powers are so strong Strong that she can replicate another mutant's abilities and their appearance, so she could be a really interesting character to have in the X-Men universe. And what about Cunningham, the other patient that Wade talked to at Ajax's workshop? Well, it's interesting that the film didn't explicitly seem to kill him off, as I think I saw him being injected and cased up by Angel Dust later in the movie. Perhaps Ajax was selling him as a super soldier or mutant to someone and we'll see his character come back. What do you think? And remember that Colossus tells Deadpool that we'll make an X-Man of you yet. So perhaps we'll see Deadpool pop up in a future X-Men movie, or maybe a Gambit or Wolverine movie even. 
Now, Garrison Kane was in the original screenplay for Deadpool, but ended up getting cut due to the movie's tight budget. Garrison Kane has huge bionic arms, and the filmmaker thought the additional visual effects required would be too expensive. But the character does fit in well with Cable and X-Force in the comics, so it would be interesting to see if he makes it into a sequel. By the way, Deadpool director Tim Miller has said he'd love to see Deadpool fight Wolverine's female clone, X-23. After all, there was that funny moment in the movie where Deadpool had a momentary moral quandary about attacking some female goons, debating out loud whether it was more sexist not to hit them than actually to hit them, before he got bored and pulled out his gun. Pitting Deadpool against a female Wolverine would also get around the fact that Hugh Jackman said he wants the next Wolverine movie to be his last. So guys, what did you think of the post credits tease and who would you like to see play Cable in Deadpool 2? And are there any other X-Men or other characters you'd like to see in the sequel? I can't wait to read your comments below. By the way, to check out over a hundred more Deadpool Easter eggs and references, watch my full Deadpool Easter egg video here. And you can also win some cool Deadpool merch on that video too. And there's also a link here to my full Deadpool playlist with my review, cool behind the scenes facts about the movie and Comic Con panel. Thanks for watching and see you next time, yippee guy movie lovers!